Story, story. Once upon a time, like a tale out of the Arabian night, there emerged a twinkle, twinkle black star from the rugged terrain of the then Gold Coast. His name was Francis New Year Kofi Ngoyoma Kwame Nkoma. His thoughts and vision were that of a united Africa, which later translated into Pan-Africanism. Our independence is merely laid on legs and legs of the total repression of the African continent. While Nkrumah went down the book of history as leader of the first independent sub-Saharan African nation, his accomplishment as a firebrand in the liberation of the continent earned him admirers across the continent. A 25-year-old Fatia Helen Rigg, an Arabic student at the Cairo University, also read unlike Nkrumah's autobiography. She admired his trials and tribulations. In fact, his struggles during student days in America swept her off her feet. So, when Fatia eventually met Nkrumah in person in Cairo, she could not but say yes, yes and yes to him in everything, including marriage proposal. Mother was a young woman from a different culture. Uh, she left her family to come and, and her home, home base to come and live here. So I think it was a challenging marriage in a sense, but I think I remember her saying she would do it all over again. On 31st of December 1957, Kwame decided to quit the Bachelors Club while serving as Prime Minister. Ghanaian women were infuriated and could not just understand why their leader could overlook all the Ghanaian beautiful girls and ask for a bride who could not speak English from Egypt, while he also did not speak Arabic. The then Egyptian leader Gamal Abdel Nasser called Fatiha and asked her whether she truly loved and wanted to marry his fellow comrade Kwame Nkrumah. She convinced him beyond any reasonable doubt that she has found a life partner in Kwame. So, Gamal Abdel Nasser blessed the union. Not only that, he was also said to have given her some jewelries from the traditional Egyptian royal family and jokingly call her Bride of the Nile that is getting married to a rebel. From her own side, Fatih's mother was reluctant to bless the union and frowned at the idea of a daughter marrying a foreigner. As such, her uncle was the only relative that accompanied her to Ghana to meet the groom. A few hours after she landed in Ghana, Fatih got married in a surprise ceremony at the government house attended by the groom's mother and a few government ministers. This shocked the beautiful young Coptic woman who expected at least a priest to bless the ceremony, if not a set wedding. Within months, Fatia learned English language enough to engage in banter with the banquet woman who began to like her because of her unassuming disposition. In appreciation of her charm and her affiliation with women of the country, a special kente cloth was designed and named Fatia Fata Nkuma, which means Fatia deserves Nkuma. Before his overthrow on the 21st of February 1966, Kwame had three children with Fatia. Gamal, named after the Egyptian president, Samir, and Seko, also named after the former Guinean leader, Seko Toure, where Nkuma went on exile. Nkuma drew his last breath in April 1972 in Romania after surviving several assassination attempts. While Fatia died on the 31st of May 2007 due to stroke in Cairo. Her remains were, however, flown to Ghana for a funeral at the state house. And following her lifelong request, she was buried next to her husband at the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. While observers say this is just another love story, another school of thought believed that Kwame's marriage to an Egyptian was one of his symbolic way of spreading Pan-Africanism between Arab North and Black Africa. From Cairo, Egypt, Ziri Ziyad, NTA News.